Henry found life boring at the works. The men worked hard to make him better, but it seemed ages before he was ready. At last, however, when he had passed the test to make sure he was mended properly, men came to repaint him. But Henry saw that instead of nice green paint, they had something very different in their paint pots. That's not right, protested Henry. The fat controller wants me to be green with red stripes, not red all over like... like tomato sauce. The painters laughed. You'd look very handsome, Henry, they said. But don't worry, this paint is a special sort of undercoat. You shall have proper green with red stripes before we've finished. Undercoat, muttered Henry in disgust. Whatever would the other engines say if they saw me looking like this? The men laughed and carried on painting. Early next morning, his driver came. Wake up, Henry, he said. There's an emergency at the big station and the fat controller says you're to help. But I can't go like this, exclaimed Henry. They'd all laugh like anything. No choice, said his driver. The diesel pulling the express has failed and the fat controller needs you to take over. It's either us or a long walk for the passengers and you know the fat controller wouldn't like that. The fireman raised steam as quickly as he could and Henry, blushing with embarrassment, set off for the big station. The fat controller was pleased to see him. I feel so silly looking like this, complained Henry. The fat controller laughed. You do look unusual, Henry, he agreed, but you have helped me out of a very awkward situation, so don't worry about it. But Henry did worry. Soon, too soon for Henry, it was time to start. The express was heavy, and Henry felt the drag of the coaches. We'll need help on Gordon's Hill today, remarked his driver, but they were in trouble earlier than that. As they approached Edward Station, the brakes went wrong on the last coach of the train and they had to stop and uncouple it. To make matters worse, Donald, who should have been there to help, had been called away. Henry had to push the coach into a siding himself and, without Donald, there was no one to help him on the hill. Never mind, comforted his driver. You can do it. You're an enterprising engine, remember? Henry snorted. He didn't feel very enterprising just then. The men at the works had mended Henry well. His driver gave him as good a start as he could. It was hard going, but now Henry felt fired with determination. Let them laugh at my red paint, he snorted. I'll show them. Slowly he struggled upwards. I can do it! I can do it! I can do it! He panted. Oh dear, will the top never come? Then, suddenly, there it was. I've done it! I've done it! I've done it, he puffed proudly. After that, it was much easier, and they reached the other railway quickly. The fat controller, who had been on the train, came to congratulate Henry. Well done, Henry, he said. I'm very proud of you. Perhaps all my engines should be painted red, but you have certainly earned your proper green with red stripes, which, of course, is just what Henry got. And when he at last returned to the shed, there was a warm welcome for Henry the Green Engine.